Bao la. Bao la. Bao. 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 Bao la. Bao. Bao la. Bao. 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 Me and my hitters go all out, ball out, ball out. We about to take them all out, ball out, ball out. Me and my hitters go all out, me and my hitters go all out. We about to take them all out. Dropping by the mall out, come deliver mail on y'all route. Right. Show them, show them what it's all about. Just get called out, fall out, fall out. Me and my clique will fall out, me and my chick will fall out. We minding our business, keep y'all out. Break up. Get up quick, then we hit licks till it's all out. I hate my job, I'ma call out. Boss on myself, child out. I'm a recruiter, a high percentage shooters. Gotta keep rifles and rubies. Some people just trifling and losers. Watch for the jackets at night, they be cruising. I can put put, put together. A yard kiss and yellow. My hitters be tough in the leather. Can't nobody do it better. Glock 9 with the F in. Step in with my best friends. Best friends, Smith and West in. If you miss six, you still catch 10. Ball out, ball out. All out, pulling up outside the y'all house, empty till we all out. I got the juice and I'm crazy, the crazy. If you not a killer, don't say his squad ain't nothing to play with. Undertaker and a grave dig, best man like Tay Diggs. When you in the paint, gotta play big. Hit us ignorant like cavemen, went from good fella to made men. Ball out, ball out, me and my hitters go all out. Child out, ball out, ball out, get called out. Ball out, ball out, me and my hitters go all out. Ball out, ball out. We about to take a ball out, ball out, ball out. Me and my hitters go all out, me and my hitters go all out. We about to take a ball out, ball out, ball out. Me and my hitters go all out, ball out, ball out. We Boss Cowboy Sports Thursday night. Like, share, subscribe, comment. YouTube, Instagram, y'all get in here, get in the building. It's Boss Cowboy Sports live Thursday night. We're in the building with the latest and the greatest in Dallas Cowboy Sports and news. I'm OC, the man with the plan on the ones and twos, Boss Cowboy, last but certainly not least, businessman, NFL alumni, entrepreneur, LaTerrence Dunbar is in the building with us this evening. How y'all doing, fellas? Say something to the people. Yeah, man. First, uh, we want to obviously give the Terrence a chance to introduce himself, and then we'll definitely get right into it because we definitely got a lot to talk about. And I'm excited because whenever you get somebody that you know wear the shield, you always should take their experiences um, as much as yours. Because even if you crack that door once, you still one of the few that's ever cracked it. So it's a lot to learn from people that actually put on those shoes, put on that helmet and actually fought those wars that you know guys like him got to go through so first uh Laterrence, tell us a little bit about yourself before we kind of get right into all the meat and potatoes of the show well boss cowboy man you actually that introduction was phenomenal i was born and raised uh dallas uh in dallas south oak cliff i attended dallas south oak cliff uh, high school i also uh had an opportunity to play in fort Worth, where i attended texas christian university go frogs Drafted by the Atlanta Falcons in 2002, I played a total of about three or four years. So I had an eye injury, so it forced me to retire. Uh, I had an opportunity to play with Michael Big, uh, the Damon Thomas thing, and some of the greats. Now I'm a community project developer, and I'm developing programs in the inner city to try to help our young people understand uh, all levels of the game. So thank you guys for having me on this podcast, Boss Cowboy. We know each other. OC, man, let's get back to the business. Absolutely. And just, I want to give a brief story. When I first met the Terrence, I met him at SportsCon. And I mean, he stood out immediately. And we're going to talk about some of the ways that he gives back to the community. It's not in what you think. It's not going to be just cookie cutter programs and grants. He is very outside the box on giving back. So I can't wait to talk about that. But I do know people that's in the building, they want to kind of hear about the Cowboys and they want to glean from your experience uh, of being an NFL player. And when I looked at your story, man, the first person that I really thought of that kind of, to me, coincide with you is Simi, right? So Simi is a guy that we drafted, obviously in the fifth round, but he's coming into right. a very, very deep room, right? So he coming into where all the guys 
uh, either have first round talent or uh, they was drafted in the first round. I want you to kind of talk about what is it going to take for a guy like him to stick out and what was it like for you and, and correlated to Simi, if you don't mind? Well, Simi has a wonderful opportunity. First of all, not a lot of guys actually get an opportunity to continue their game. So for him to get an opportunity to get picked up by one of America's greatest teams, the Dallas Cowboys, is always a blessing. Uh, as a late round pick, if any advice from a, a guy who actually made a team to Simi would be to focus on the special teams. Mm -hmm. Take this opportunity to understand Atlanta, uh, understand the game, understand that unfortunately only 53 people get an opportunity to continue uh, to play this game. So if he could do anything, uh, focus on his special teams, work on um, his punt coverage, and also fight for that position for returning the ball. So late round picks, you know, as wide receivers, they only keep about six on the team. So if you want to make this lead, try to make an impression on special teams this year, and he'll give himself a chance to have some film. Mm, boy, y'all better listen. We got LaTerrence in the building talking that real talk. I 100% agree. What you got, O.C.? No, man. I mean, listen, I think Simi is a guy that he's a Dak friendly target. I think that he is going to have his opportunities because him and Dak communicated initially out of him being drafted, which I think is a positive thing. Um, I think that some of the uh, receivers outside of the top three are a little bit more expendable uh, than what you might think. I think that the culture and based upon the draft of the Cowboys, they are trying to create a competitive environment. I mean, the pecking order is the pecking order. I think he'll have his chance but you know to LaTerrence's point man you got to make that impression on special teams definitely and uh, I just think he got to make plays in the preseason however and whenever he gets the opportunity and if he does that he'll make the big three man roster right yeah so did you have some questions for LaTerrence yeah, I mean, man, look, uh, you know, we, we, we kind of talked a little bit backstage, but to kind of keep it, you know, generic high level, man, what, what, what do you think that would be the strengths from what you from whatever you understand about this aspect of it in terms of like the route combinations, in terms of like when you talk about the weapons of the Cowboys, right? When you talk about, you know, Amari Cooper obviously being traded from the Raiders and the impact he had on Dak when they were doing receiver by committee. Also, you know, them drafting CD Lane and then a guy that's coming up um, on his fourth year now, Gallup. Like, how do you see them being effective in terms of, like, scheme based upon your experience in the league? And, and what do you think they'll do and, and, and your thoughts about that? Well, uh, Amari Cooper and the guy, C.D. Lamb, these guys aren't typical uh, receivers that you typically get in any game. These guys are all above, you know, 5'11". They come with a lot of weight and a lot of good route running and speed off the ball. So in order for us to maximize our offense this year, I think uh, Dak has to be in sync and be very patient and realize no matter what, his wide receivers will be open a lot more than what he's used to. So um, uh, for, with this wide receiver core again, I see Amari Cooper setting the pace. CD, if we can move him uh, around and not let him get jammed off the ball, I think we should have a real good uh, uh, opportunity to confuse a lot of the coverages. Uh, so I'm excited to see what these guys have to offer with a full healthy back. Cool, man. Cool. And then I got two more quick follow-ups, and I'm going to kick it over to Boss Cowboy. So, like, it's been a lot of rumblings, man, in the media uh, over the past several months about Michael Gallup, right? And about, because we talked about Simi starting off, right? So, when Simi got drafted, a lot of people immediately jumped to the conclusion that Simi would be Gallup's replacement if they didn't re-sign Gallup after this coming year and then Gallup has put out several tweets and things like that to kind of say hey he's been great playing here and we don't really know what he's thinking but how do you see Michael Gallup right I mean normally he runs at the top of the route tree he, he's running like you know your five up to your nine routes you know things like that but how do you see him do you think he's a guy based upon your experience that you know is underrated overrated how, how do you see him well, I deal with the same thing when I was in Atlanta. So I think if Michael Gallup continue to run his X or his, or his Z position, and if he can stretch the field, he has a wonderful opportunity to set the pace right behind Amari Cooper. Again, uh, Michael Gallup, it is contract negotiation time. So if he can just shut out the clutter and do what he has to do and average about five to seven catches a game, and if he can break a couple of tackles, he'll have a 100-yard game a year. So um, where he can average, you know, high 70s, high 80s, 
uh, yards a game with less than 10 or 15 catches. So if he realized his role now, uh, uh, Dallas has been in a situation where we haven't run, we haven't won games or been past the second round of playoffs in a couple of years. So this is the year that we need to gel together. If Michael Gallup can remember his job as a team, no I team, I think we have a wonderful opportunity uh, for him to put up big numbers. Also, when it comes to injuries, you, you guys know right around midseason, we always have we suffer with hamstring injuries and groin injuries. So uh, you might be you might not be the starter, you know, week one or two. By week three or four, you'd be the main guy. So if he can stay focused and just continue to work on his gel and his cohesiveness with the rest of our receivers, learn this new offense, you guys. And I think we should have a, a wonderful opportunity to average about 33, 35 points a game. So I'm looking forward to seeing what's going on this year uh, with the Cowboys. Yeah, and, and I want to ask a quick. And, and, and I'm I, and you brought up something really really interesting to me. Uh, um, I really want to ask this question. This is not planned, right? Like, how do you train, right? And what advice would you give to young receivers and veteran receivers to avoid those soft tissue injuries? Because I'm of a certain opinion that you can train and prep that body to avoid those hamstrings, to avoid certain things like that. Do you have any advice or like wisdom as it relates to that? Well, yes, I'm a guy who suffered from tons and tons of hamstring injuries and groin injuries. And I didn't realize until I went to Montreal the importance of water. Mm -hmm. uh, so if these guys want to be affected this year, I think we should uh, slow down on the uh, extracurricular activities. Uh, I know it's the pressure of going out and hanging out. And uh, the biggest thing that's going to uh, deteriorate their body this year will be the alcohol. So mm -hmm. if, my, if I want to see focused on drinking more water, uh, at least a gallon of water a day, put a little salt in there and just stay away from all of the sugar and all of the things that uh, break down your tissues, they will be able to recover faster. It's not like when I played back in 2002, we really didn't understand the hydration and the importance of your rest. So if I can say anything to you guys on how to bounce back, talking from a guy who's uh, who's forward growing and also had tons and tons of hamstring injuries, hydration is important, hydration is the key. Uh, and I think if we do that, we have an opportunity to bounce back a little bit faster than what you're used to doing. So I'm looking excited. I'm like I said again, I'm excited about the Cowboys. I'll be at the Tampa game. Mm. Uh, you know, root on the Cowboys. Yes, I'll try to make every game history with the Cowboys. So it's get on the radar. So I'm excited man. about this year. And that's and listen, man, this is kind of a little bit off topic, but I just want to say this, you know, as I was preparing this. Like for people that's from Dallas, I'm gonna be all the way honest. I'm from Singing Hills, and when I saw this on your Facebook, man, I'm like, man, that's bad tea. Like when yes, you sir. see, <laughs> when you see the boys from your community, man, because I I was born and raised in Singing Hills, and I literally stayed right down the street from Bad T, him and Tony. And it just, you know, I just want to kind of say that just off topic, man. Just love to see DFW guys, little dreams. And people don't really understand how big it is for the Dallas Cowboys to have guys that play for this city. So I want to ask you a question about traits because the OC, I spent some time with him yesterday. Like we're a lot nicer now than we was yesterday because <laughs> we was in the competitive mode. You know how it is, man. We was repping. But... I was watching this tape and he reminded me of Jerry and James, like a complete receiver. See, there are receivers, mm -hmm. okay. they, what they, it's a lot of receivers. I I really never respected receivers as a cornerback because too many of them was divas to me, you know? <laughs> but that wasn't LaTerrence game at all. Like I'm watching the no. film with him. He took pride in special teams. He took pride in blocking and he would go hard when that ball touched his hands. So I want to talk to you about, like, especially when you brought up Simi, like, what are the real traits of being a football player receiver? I want you to get into that, because your tape proved that that's what you are. Well, um, a complete wide receiver understands all levels of the game. Uh, just like in life, you have offense, defense, and special teams. So um, again, like you said, how to integrate and reiterate the importance of us having a successful season. Here being a local guy, if we can have our Dallas Cowboys focus on our community engagement, their mm. social justice, make sure they're, both, they're, most, uh, they're personable, make sure that they're going to these games, appreciating the fans and the nonprofits mm. that are definitely spending a lot of time that I, their hours volunteering at these stadiums. I think uh, the cohesiveness of the city will come together and embrace this win. We are, we're due for a win. 
uh, when it comes to what these young guys can do. Uh, do what I did when I was drafted by Atlanta Falcons. I made sure I was at every community organization event. Uh, I was mentored by Ward Dunn. This guy has put over 100 or built 145 homes for uh, single moms uh, when I was in Atlanta. I made sure I was at every high school, every speaking conference. I was working on my uh, my brand. So one thing about the NFL, uh, take this short period in your time in your life to make sure that your, your connections, your relationships are always right. So once you're a, a part of the team, you're on the best of the best. Uh, so it's your job to take it important when you talk about your offseason, your connection to the community. So again, uh, my, my statistics show it's been about what 15 years since I touched the big skin, but I'm still out in my community making sure that my face is recognized and my programs are being administered across America. So uh, for any rookie wide receiver, especially those who are on uh, don't really know their place or any running back that comes to the league, immediately jump deep into your community and find out how you can be involved because football players, we wear helmets. So uh, once their name is uh, uh, ripped off the back of your back, are you going to continue to be uh, involved in your community? And so that's what I focus on as a community project developer and ambassador of the NFL alumni. So good luck to these guys. Good luck to the season. I'm looking forward to see what we do. Man, that's awesome, man. That's awesome, man. I, I really love, man, what you mentioned about, you know, the social justice, man, and the community involvement, because I think that it's, it's so important for people, um, you know, of color, man, to, to, to utilize their platform, man, to impact uh, the culture and also, you know, attack some of the negative things that have happened in the world today and level the playing field you know, for, for a lot of us to get opportunities, man. So hats off to you, man, and everything you're doing. Uh, we appreciate you. And definitely as a show, man, anything we can do to support you, we're we going to be here for that 100%. Right. Well, let me say this before I get off. I'm definitely excited about what I'm currently doing. This project I have now, I'm uh, partnering with the, uh, the first Beauty Football League. You can see the shirt I have on now. This football league is out of Fort Worth, Texas, but now we're reaching out into the inner city of Dallas. Uh, we're going to be one of the leagues that's ran by professional ladies and they're going to be coaching young ladies the game of football. So uh, we're reaching out. We have over a thousand events outside of the uh, United States. Our first event is going to be this weekend, uh, February, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, July the 3rd in Frisco. So you can find us on our Instagram. Uh, you can follow me at Dunbar Bay. That's B-E-Y with, uh, you know, Dunbar with the B-E-Y instead of B-A-Y. B-U-N-B-A-R-B-E-Y. And you can see more things about what we're doing. And I'm definitely excited about what these ladies are doing and how they're changing the game and how we take football from a female's perspective. Well, Terrence, man, I want to wrap with you offline, man. I didn't have a chance to catch up with you before, man, but I'll definitely reach out to you. We'll wrap, you know, and talk business and just how we can kind of help and connect and support as well, man. So, no, thank you for that so much. Terrence, before you go, can you take a couple of more questions or did you have to go? Yeah, no, we can take questions. I'm here to answer any questions I can. Okay. Uh, keep this thing going. Cool, 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 cause man, cause I always think you was getting ready to cut out. I'm like, no, don't cut out. <laughs> no, but um, cause I just had a couple more questions about Dallas, the Cowboys, and then I wanted to get into your, you know, connections with the NFL alumni. Uh, just a couple okay. more things, but uh, in terms of the Dallas Cowboys, from your professional alumni eye and experience, what do you forecast? I guess. And it can be general, don't have to be specific. What do you kind of see okay. happening with the weapons, the way that they're kind of geared up? And that's going to be all the weapons. That's including Zeke, the tight ends, but whatever you want to talk about. But I figured that you would have a real good feel since you played, you know. So I wanted to get your thoughts on that. Well, Amer uh, Dallas Cowboys, no matter what you say, is America's team. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but when they lose a Sunday night game, it seems like everybody in the city, uh, the energy is low. Uh, <laughs> when they win, it seems like uh, the energy Pop. changes as well. As when they win, it's like the energy of the ones that don't like the Dallas Cowboys are hot. <laughs> so again, uh, when the Cowboys win, it changes the dynamic of the game. So it's important for them now uh, to, because we got the bulls out on our back. Uh, what, what better way to start off 2021 after the COVID year, having a team that's either hated or love, representing the star uh, on a winning side. So I think it's very important that Dallas Cowboys realize that it has to be our year. A lot of us are just like everybody else. We're tired of talking about how good we are, how good we could be. It's time to unite as a team and represent the city of Dallas 
uh, to the fullest extent. Uh, it's mm. Something about that star, and so I think it's time for us to represent that star with pride because the DFW Metroplex needs uh, to show the positive side of what the city of Dallas can do. So I'm excited. Hopefully, this is our year. And because man, and I got I got one for you too, just real quick that I always love, man, because I want to get your expertise and your viewpoint. Because I got my own opinions about stuff, but I always want to hear from a guy that played the position and that played at the highest level. Right. If you had to, if you had to say your top two or three receivers, right, in the league, man, I want your opinion. It could be anybody, you know. Don't feel no pressure saying nothing about the Cowboys if that's not you know how you feel. Who are your top two, three receivers in the league today, and why? Well, of course, I'm going to have to say Amari Cooper because I love his work ethic. He came here mm -hmm. in a situation where he did not know what he was going to do. And as soon as he stepped on the field, the, the dynamics of the game and the energy of the Cowboys, we won. Uh, I'm looking at Julio Jones because I've been watching him uh, ever since he played in Alabama. Uh, his work ethic again and the way he can utilize his body. And then when it comes to the third and final tight end, that's a, uh, that's a toss up. Uh, uh, the game has changed since I played. When I played, you was a 5'11 wide receiver got to play. Uh, so to see these guys that can use their acrobatic talent and they can use their skills to the best of their ability, I think I look at complete, complete units. Uh, of course, uh, coming from TCU, it wasn't about how many passes you catch. We used to say how many stickers we got on the back of our head when you do the mental toughness, extra effort thing. So mm. those pancake blocks, those blocks mm. when you uh, when you know those chase down, or what you're doing with special teams. So that's why I like those two guys. That third guy, I'm going to leave it to suspense because, again, uh, I think uh, that person has not been uh, notified or that, that person not on the radar, you know. So uh, those two, Amari Cooper and what I see uh, with my boy Julio, uh, you know, those are two two guys who do it right and play the game right. Hmm. And then... Um, okay, thank you. One of the things that, you know, being from Dallas and... Me and you really, what people don't know is we really are the same era. I'm slightly older, but we are the same era. So I do know you experienced the championships in Dallas and you was old enough to know what that meant. <laughs> it's a lot of people not. So I wanted to kind of hear from you what experience in a championship in the city of Dallas and playing for TCU like what would a ring do for DFW and both business and personal and just for just the NFL in general? I just want to get your thoughts on that, especially experiencing it. Well, let's talk about what we know. Let's talk about the owners. First of all, Jerry Jones is the owner. We set the bar when it comes to stadiums. Let's talk about what's going on in the community with DFW. Uh, when it comes to the housing market and what's going on um, in our communities, DFW is uh, is the center place of calmness and peace. Uh, and then, then let's talk about the, uh, the paraphernalia that we sell, <laughs> the amount of people that come to the games, uh, Cowboy Stadium, it's still 100,000 people. I know because I haven't missed a game in three years or an event in three years inside of Texas Stadium. So for them to actually win this year and bring a ring home, oh. it would definitely enlighten the energy. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever been to I know you guys have, but if you're new to the city, when you go to Arlington, Texas, uh, we're known for the city with no roof. Uh, you know, we have everything <laughs> laid back. So I'm excited uh, to let this, uh, you know, what they say, God is smiling on America's team. So uh, it's time for us to get a ring and a win. So I'm definitely excited about what we're going to do. And I believe that we should go deep in the playoffs. Yeah. I think it's going to be us in Tampa. And I think this year we're going to be smiling out in L.A. getting ready to bring on the championship. Ooh. Uh oh, uh oh, yeah. Y'all call uh -oh. it first. No, and I believe okay. that too. I really do. No, I really do, man. I have that same feeling that I had when Emmett, and you remember those days when 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 we first acquired Emmett, and you could tell we turned the corner. I feel that right now. Right. I had it. You, it's I don't know. I just had that feeling, and it's not. It's not like Kool Aid. Like I don't drink Kool Aid without right. measuring it. You know what I mean? Um, now, we spoke briefly yesterday about your connections with the NFL alumni, right? Okay. I want to talk about okay. that more and your actual connections with the Dallas Cowboys because I'm going to tell you, LaTerrence is very humble. Like, you know, he's very right. humble. <laughs> so he, right. you have to pull it out of him, a lot of the stuff that he's got going on because he got a lot of good stuff. I want you to kind of expound on that and then I want to kind of dig into that if you don't mind. 
Well, I want to keep it simple. You guys know the importance of mentorship. Uh, you play organized sports for, for, for a couple of reasons. One reason is for the unity and brotherhood. The second right. reason is for the exposure. Uh, then the third reason, the ability to travel. Uh, I can honestly say uh, with what I'm doing with the NFL alumni, the way I'm forcing them to be active, the way I'm forcing us to be more engaged into our community nonprofits. I'm also providing on-the-job training grants and programs that each and every alumni can administer down to their nonprofit. Uh, my role with the NFL alumni and the Dallas Cowboys is now I'm one of the exclusive vendors that are going to have an opportunity to put over a thousand people to work starting July the 10th in Jerry Jones Stadium. Uh, he's given me an opportunity to come in as an entrepreneur to express my feelings and my opinions about how we can make this process smoother and create real time opportunities and real jobs that pays maximum wages to our young adults. Um, again, social justice in Dallas, uh, we know that Dallas, Texas started the first 48. So I think it's important now that we now take one of the strongest chapters, which is the Dallas chapter, and we now incorporate uh, some of the most educated women in our community, uh, those from TCU, North Texas, those who live in the inner city from Powell Quinn. Uh, I'm definitely excited to see how we can now use our resources to put over 100,000 young people in sports, uh, for sports. So uh, since the last 12 years, I've been hustling and bustling. I said, what I didn't do on a big screen, I'm gonna do in my community. Mm. And so I'm definitely excited to uh, show people, uh, you know what they say in Dallas, uh, we, we, we're from the show me state. So uh, from uh, July the 3rd on forward, we're gonna actually be showing you guys what we're doing, entrepreneurship. We're gonna be talking about philanthropy. We're gonna be talking about government programs and funding. Uh, my challenge to people that's listening to us is give us your excuse and let us give you some real life answers and resources. Uh, we're no more uh, in that informational stage or where information is lost. The only problem that we have is you don't know who to research, who to call, and how to follow up. So our goal now and my goal as one of the ambassadors is to bring real life resources, real life products, and give you real life contact because at the age of 40, I realize if I can do this for you guys in my community, then the torch can be passed. And I think that's where we're at. So again, I'm excited what I'm doing here in Dallas. I'm excited about the joint ventures that I'm creating, about the people that are flying down from all other cities and states to come and listen to me speak and listen to these types of podcasts. So whatever I can do uh, to spread the word about unity, peace, love, freedom, and, and, and justice, uh, that's what I'm here about. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy to continue this marathon. And that's awesome, man. That is awesome, man. Hats off to you, man, and everything you're doing, man. Really appreciate it, man. Really inspired just hearing you talk, man, about and, and seeing the passion that you have for serving others, man, and giving back and really making an impact, man. So fantastic. And like I said, we will definitely talk offline, man. So kudos, man. Kudos to everything you're doing. OC, I appreciate trying. you. Thank you guys no, a lot. No, 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 no. OC, keep trying to end the show. Don't listen to the OC. No, 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 no. I'm not trying to end the Your show. I'm just, I'm just so saying conclusive. what I think. <laughs> No, I'm well, just, I'm, you know, that's how I talk. No, it's all good. I best with you. No, we can keep rocking, man. No, I'm just saying, I, I'm definitely, definitely excited, man. Nah, and I'm just saying again. Nah, he's very interesting, just being like, you know what I'm saying, know, about, about what you're when doing. When I no first doubt. met LaTerrence at SportsCon, I mean, like, I was shocked when I heard right. about the philanthropy work that he was doing. Because a lot of people, to be all the way honest, you know, when they make it to the NFL, they start focusing on ways to kind of showcase themselves and from day one that i've always met you your missions because you showed me the pictures when i first ran into you and you were showing me the work right. that you was doing in prisons and my mouth dropped yes, yes. you know and I, I was gonna show you pictures because you showed me the pictures we took pictures but you know we'll do right. that later but you know right. now he's very very impressive so i think you expounded well uh, on because your life is way more than football correct, correct can you talk yeah. a little bit more about your community project developer and nonprofit business consultations and that type of work? well okay so uh we have to understand the problem that we have and the disconnect that we have in our community uh i think uh when it comes on a federal level and state level we tend to forget the importance of how athletes uh, members of the ROTC and music can actually gel a community. Uh, if you look at some of the most successful uh, athletic programs, the football programs bring in the resources. 
uh, uh, to, to get the season started. But we set the tone uh, when it comes to uh, what's happening in our community about the relationships with small businesses. If your businesses support your local little league in your local high school, that brings revenue, that brings excitement to the community. The problem that we have in a lot of inner cities is that we have so many uh, disconnections. We have so many people that are either unemployed, dislocated. We have so much crime where people don't really understand what to do next. Uh, one thing that COVID taught us is that anybody can be knocked down off their high horse. Um, and COVID also told us how important it is to respect the ones that educate our young people, uh, the ones who are also taking care of us inside of these hospitals. Uh, so hopefully after this COVID year uh, ends, uh, that we realize the understanding and importance of uh, training and taking responsibility for our own actions. So as a community project developer, again, my job is to say, hey, we know for a fact uh, what the generation and population is and the nationality of what we look like. Uh, we know the importance of now we have to be important. Uh, men, as men, we have to stand up about social issues uh, that deal with our community like domestic violence, the, uh, the problems that we have with the gang violence, the problem that we have with men putting their hand on our women that we don't really show a face. So as a community project developer, I get upset about the police brutality. It's the same way as I get upset about a brother who's uh, assaulting a young lady. And so uh, with this mission and with the city of Dallas, with my connections, I'm going to say no more excuses. Uh, if you need a job or a career, we have those resources for you. If you need resources about how to start a nonprofit, we're going to provide that for you. Uh, I think it's important that people realize that athletes are real life human beings and we don't know and we can't put our situation or put ourselves in situations to always be in danger. Uh, but from what I understand, danger is a learned trait. Uh, you know, fear is inevitable, but danger is learned. So what I'm going to do is organize groups of brothers who's not afraid to come into these high schools, who's not afraid to talk to you soon, get out of jail systems and give you the information on how you can be successful. Uh, I challenge all little league coaches to start teaching our young, young uh, uh, our young athletes about structure, about how to start a nonprofit, how to copyright and private label your information, how to then uh, uh, talk about the importance of passports and currency exchange. It's the problem that we have now is uh, that our young people, if you don't leave your city, of your community, the chances of you being successful are slim to none. I have friends who's never left Oak Hill who think Frisco is going out of town. <laughs> uh, and vice versa. And so we got to stop letting these people make these policies about our community who never, ever, ever been in the community. And so as a community project developer, our, our, goal, our goal is to bridge the gap. All right. We got offense, you got defense, but let's be special teams. Let's be the top 11 that can change the possession of any circumstance. Uh, technology and the resources that we have now, we should have no more excuse why our communities look the way they do. So uh, I challenge the athletes again. I'm challenging the cheerleaders, the team moms, the bands, the city council members to give us real information, real statistics so we can now have real choices. And uh, we can fill these stadiums with 100,000 people on one weekend screaming and yelling. We can do the same thing when it's talk about uplifting and building our community. So that's, the, that's my lead. And that's what I'm pushing for, to uh, find like-minded individuals who are not afraid to stand behind a woman and let them leave and we just be there to get the job done. I have one more question. Yes, sir. <clears throat> How can we help you? Well, you already have to be. Uh, of course, uh, uh, right now, because the world is opening up, continue to have these type of podcasts, continue to open up the discussion and ask somebody the simple question. What did you do or what will you do when you don't make it to the NFL? Mm -hmm. What are you doing now at age 12 to stay relevant? So when you retire at age 27, that the people in your community still understands your philanthropy efforts. Uh, when are you going to stand up and say wrong is wrong and right is right and not blast for somebody and not continue to beat them down, but put them in a situation where they got to be better? All right, and this is why I'm taking young people out of the communities and I'm putting them in major stadiums. How do you, and, and it's, 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 um, it's crazy that we don't realize the opportunities that we have by taking a person out of the community and putting them to a stadium, let them learn on the job training, let them actually see success. And I think that I think that's what we need to start. So for this next six months, how can you help me get behind our FBFL, 
That's First Beauty Football League. I'm starting with the women first for the six months. If you want to make a donation, we don't need your money. We need your time. Uh, we're already getting a donation for uh, showing up in numbers. So this is one of the leagues or one of the organizations that we don't want your money. We can't even we can't even use your money. Uh, we're actually giving away money. So we need time. We need for you to take the time, come to see what we're doing. And I guarantee you, if you give us 144 hours to train you properly, you'll be definitely impressed. So that's what we're doing. We have resources. We have funding. We have money, but we're not going to give it away. We're not the food stamp office. We're not the unemployment office. We're not the welfare office. I'm not saying anything is wrong with that, but we're looking for people that want to get up out their beds and get into their communities and prove that if you give us an opportunity tonight, that we can be a moving force. So I'm excited to see what the city of Dallas has to offer. Wow, brother. Wow, man. Uh, so, uh, first of all, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, man. So, um, obviously, man, great representation, you know, of, and I wear this with pride, man, Oak Cliff Society. I'm very proud yes, of Oak being Cliff. from Oak Cliff. I'm very proud of being a Southern Dallas guy. And you make me even more proud. You know, I really mean that just to see you and your heart towards my city. I mean, I absolutely love it, man. So obviously we're gonna stay connected and find ways to continue to help you do what you do better. Uh, OC, did you have anything? Cause then I, I want to make sure the people know where to, to find him. Did you have anything? You muted, I think, OC. Did you mute yourself? Sorry about that. Yeah, no, we good to go, man. We go talk offline, man. Fantastic meeting you. Thank you for giving time, man. And uh, we'll be in touch real soon. I no problem. Thank you, guys. All right, now, uh, and let, let me make this sure this is correct. This is the information I was able to pull up. Is that right? Okay. Did we get? Did we get? That is correct. So that okay. asks who I am. Uh, on, you can me, find me on. Oh, hold on. Let me, let me at, pull it back up. Okay. Real quick. Okay. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I okay, again, like I said, yes, uh, uh, I'm definitely on LinkedIn. Uh, if you want to just Google my name, you can find what I'm doing. Uh, but you can definitely get direct access to me on my Instagram. Again, just like anything else, uh, we live in a society where followers is important. So I guess uh, if you want to follow me on Instagram, you can follow follow me at, at Dunbar Bay, B-E-Y. Uh, Dunbar is spelled D-U-N-B-A-R. BEY. I'm definitely going to be posting information about uh, different events that I'm doing. Uh, this football season, we have over uh, a thousand events that we're going to be uh, raising money at. And so you can definitely follow us uh, and definitely find out what we're doing. And I'm excited. I want to say thank you again to the NFL alumni, as well as my Dallas chapter for allowing for me to set the bar. Uh, my job is done, bar. I'm going to put the bar so high that the people behind me is going to be excited to try to feel and touch the sky. So uh, that's how you find me. And again, you guys, thank you again for uh, giving me the opportunity to uh, just talk to the crowd and to your audience and tell them how excited, how, how excited I am about this year and how important it is for you to, uh, to uh, get back to your community. All right, and I can't wait to do it again, big brother, man. And you definitely take it easy and thank you again. And then obviously we go cut. Well, thank you guys again. Okay, my brother. Thank you, brother. All right, peace okay. and love. Okay, so, yeah, OC, what's your thoughts, man? Yeah, man, just a fantastic individual, man, and um, driven and passionate about uh, affecting change and actually, you know, doing more than a lot of people do, which is just talk, you know, and so he's yeah. active doing it. It's his whole life. He's putting the work in, man, to have an impact, and we all should do that, man, and, and our area of influence. We may not be able to do as much as he can do, but we can have an impact in our immediate community, in our immediate circle of family and friends, man, and for the betterment of culture, children, uh, women, uh, in society, and we should. So just super impressive guy, man. Uh, glad to know him, and uh, man, we'll be more involved. You'll definitely see him back on the show. And uh, no, nah, man, great, great interview, man. Happy to have him. Yeah, and what was your thoughts, I guess, on with him and the football takes that he had too? Because he had some very, very good 
Cool yeah, players. I mean, he 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 he's rating Amari Cooper and Julio Jones as your top two tight receivers, which was really interesting to me because Amari Cooper doesn't, you know, get the respect, I guess, that uh, that a lot of people that play the game thinks that he deserves. And I think he's a top five to six receiver. I'm surprised um, he didn't mention uh, Michael Jones, the receiver out of New Orleans. You know, I'm surprised he didn't mention him, uh, Michael Thomas, excuse me, uh, out of New Orleans, right? Because I think he's a top tier tight receiver too. Maybe he might be your number three, uh, but I think that him him playing the game, man, and the insights he had about how to make a football team, I think that's the key thing that the key takeaway I got is that man, he's he's thinking about okay, how do I make this team strategically, right? It's 53 spots, six are gonna be receivers. And I got drafted. What do I need to do strategically to make this team? And he said, man, show up on special teams and get those punt returns, man. Try to make a play. And, man, you might you probably get in there. So that was good, man. All good stuff from him, man. Fantastic stuff. And yeah. And then the thing, you know, he lived it, too. Like, yeah, we was, you know, we had fun yesterday. You know, we, we talked to our Oak Cliff Ebonics. You know, it's a certain kind of language we have on the south side. Uh, but you can see he's first class professional. But when we was talking about football, he was showing me. <laughs> you know, we was going back and forth, Carter versus Sock, and you know. But the stuff we do in our community is very. We rivals, but we got love for each other. And now he was complete, man, a very complete player. Like, and he made sure I saw that. He was like, "No, nah, boss, you not just seeing me making plays. It's also about look at that crack back." Yeah, you saw that. Look at me as the gunner. Yes, and yes, I made four tackles. He counted all of it. And that's why I wanted to talk about that because, see, I mean what I said, and you know me on this, OC. You know me on this. I don't re I don't respect receivers unless they complete. Yep. If you're not willing to play football other than just the diva side where you're just trying to embarrass the other man, you know, mm -hmm. it's more than receiver than that. And it's only a few that played that way, and he was one. And I mean mm -hmm. that. You know I don't give that card to people. I don't. No. So, no. so when he came out talking about Simi, you know, most people was would, would, would have talked about, oh, man, how many plays he's going to make. He's going to have to jump over somebody's head. He's going to have to go deep. He's going to have to show Wilgo. No. Nah. Listen to the former mm -hmm. pro. He said, this man going to go have to show out on what? Special, Special teams. teams. <laughs> Special teams. Yeah. And, and that's coming from a guy that was drafted in the sixth round. And, and he's saying, this is how to do it. So, I mean, so whenever we get interviews like this, man, I always say to everybody, man, really key in and lock in hard. Because mm -hmm. that puts you in a window to where you also know what to expect from your own guy. So, I mean, I think it was first class, man. First class. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. First class person, man, all the way, man. Happy to have him. All right, man. But, hey, I, I don't got nothing else except, except, you know, ways to support and ways to follow us because we really, really, really close to hitting our goal. Yep. Yep. With Boss Cowboy Sports. The Boss Cowboy Sports on Cash App. Also, the Patreon will be live by our next show, man. We just completed an intro video. So, um, you know, look, that'll be live, man. We will be promoting that. Uh, it will be three levels of membership. Each level of membership from an insider to a VIP to MVP, man, unlocks different things uh, for you uh, in terms of shows, in terms of content. Uh, in terms of access to us and all types of neat things we'll do with live shows and stuff like that and we want to include you guys on so we want to build the family if you want to be a part of the family you love our content look forward for that for our next show uh it'll be dropped and uh, boss cowboy have that thing in the youtube link and also on the facebook as well by that time uh so man we appreciate you guys and uh no doubt man we're gonna keep rocking as we head toward a thousand and we get uh, really, really excited. We got some exciting uh, on-site stuff that's going to happen uh, during this year's training camp. So keep an eye out for that. Like, share, subscribe. Don't forget to share our videos as well, man. Get the likes up. Get the comments up. Share our videos. YouTube. Uh, also, Facebook. Follow us on Instagram, on Twitter. The OC on Instagram. Boss Cowboy Sports as well on Twitter. And, uh, man, we're going to keep rocking, man, and keep it uh, keep it going, man. Boss Cowboy Sports where your voice matters. Yeah, and I do want to 
I want to say something just real quick before we cut out. Yes. People think we begging when we say like, share, and subscribe. I want to say why. So I see in the comments, I see all the love we get. We get a lot of love from people that follow us. But mm -hmm. that one thing of hitting that like, you know what that does? It tells mm -hmm. you to, oh, people like it, show this to more people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why we say hit that like and subscribe. We not just, I don't ever want people to think we just saying it because other people saying it. No, you. this is really how you help grow us. When you hit that like, not even a subscribe, mm -hmm. when you just hit the like, it says, oh, they had good engagement. It's an algorithm. And when mm -hmm. they see we have the engagement, where well, they say, let's put this in front of other d people that follow Dallas Cowboy content. Mm -hmm. And then that's how people like us and subscribe. So people that, and I see the chat, the chat is always showing us love. The mm -hmm. way that you make sure other people mm -hmm. find out about us is also hitting that like. That's why. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then somebody no said, doubt. does the OC have a Twitter? Yes, he has a Twitter. Uh, you can find him under the OC. And that's yeah. going to look like it's going to be a long number after that. After <laughs> that. I'm sorry, I got to get that changed. changed that, man. Just, I got this. You can change that today in three okay, seconds. Look. You know what? I looked on the fonts, man. Listen, I'm, I'm going to make a confession, all right? I'm going to make a confession. <laughs> man, I'm not like the most technology uh, uh, savvy person in the world, man. I'm not, man. So I'm learning and growing. I got my strengths, which are many. That's not one. So I got to work on changing that. But yeah, it's, it's the OC. And man, hold on one second. Let me just pull it up real quick. Go. So I can tell. Ooh, God. Oh, <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> Mr. James Gary say, I've been trying to follow him. <laughs> okay. Okay. So look, if you type in, hold on, James. If you, if you type in the OC, look, my name, my 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 look, face should come up. Don't even tell right? him, man. Don't tell him. Just change Don't even tell don't, him. Don't tell him. No, go ahead, don't tell him. 84321503. So it's the OC in that long number. I'm sorry, man. I don't know why I did that when I set up my Twitter, but it happened, man. 843 Two one five zero three. So it's at the OC with that long number. I'm gonna change it. All right, I'm gonna change it, boss. I'm gonna change it. Today, today. I'm gonna change it. I'm gonna change. But if you want to follow me right now, bad. that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, they I'm gonna change it, man. I'm going to change it. I'm going to change it, guys. I'm sorry, man. But look. Listen, listen, look, Gary. Listen to what Gary said. Listen. He said, Ooh. James, I'm sorry, man. Don't worry about it, James. I'll announce it in the next show, man. We'll change it. All right. We'll change it. You can follow me on Instagram. All right. CBOC on Instagram. All right. That's easy. All right. CBOC on Instagram. That's easy. You also can follow me on Facebook, the OC as well. All right. So that's easy, right? Though you, I got pages there. You can follow me there. <laughs> and then, you know, the most important thing, hey, follow Boss Cowboy Sports, right? Follow Instagram, me. YouTube, Facebook, follow Twitter. Me. Follow Boss Cowboy Sports. Yeah. You'll get to me. Follow and me if you that. follow... Yeah, follow and look, me. and if you follow Boss Cowboy Sports... Hold on, Boss. Look, if you follow Boss Cowboy Sports, right, then you will always see the OC tag in a bunch of stuff, especially True. on Twitter, because we True. talk a lot on Twitter. Yeah. And so I'm always included in the chat. And then that's an easy way to find me. If find, you follow Boss Cowboy, like that. I see through me for right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got I got to work on that. <laughs> hey, listen, I get it together, listen, man. Listen, man. Hey, I, 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 I'm going to confess, too. I just really got really heavy to Twitter this year myself, man. You know, so, you know, all the platforms is a learning curve, too. You know, and you know how it is. Once, once we feel like we got it, we want to, oh, you don't know Twitter? Right, yeah. right. You want to put down a new man. Put yeah, down the guy that's just learned how to so do. You know I ain't going to let that go on too long. You know we laugh, but, it, it, you know. And I know you got it because you're very active on it now. It's just about changing your handle. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I, I wasn't handle, active yeah. on it even four months ago, and I'm very active now, and I love Twitter. I had no idea Twitter was popping like that. Twitter is yeah. popping. Yep. You know, but anyway. So y'all make sure y'all follow us on Twitter and all that kind of stuff, man. And somebody said the Dynamite Duo, absolutely, absolutely. Like I appreciate I, the love. I man. feel very fortunate uh, every day to be rocking with the OC. I really do. Yeah, I, yeah. I feel and, very and me, fortunate. 
Um, his football mind is second to none, and he mixes a lot of business principles into it as well, which makes him unique. He's very professional, very first class. You'll never hear a curse word come out of his mouth, even in private. You know, he's a just a first class person. You know, so it's y'all just continue to like and subscribe and grow this movement because y'all already know we're going places and i do really believe this is a dynamic duo final words oc no man look man pleasure enjoy the work with uh just a great partner man so you know, love back to you man boss cowboy do a lot behind the scenes man uh one of the hardest working dudes in the game you know what i'm saying so respect his mind respect his work respect his work habits and also the excellence in production and all the things that he does to make this show great and other shows man that we co-host so man uh honor and privilege man i wouldn't do it without him so uh i said that many times but i'll say that publicly too so uh, no pleasure man thank you guys and uh keep supporting us man and uh we'll keep pumping for content but look out for that patreon man because we go drop that and 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 the reason why the patreon is important man it's not for our financial gain so much it's just help to help support us so that we can continue to produce content and do more things man to bring great content out to you guys right on and the final words for me is always remember we strive to be loyal not devoted because a loyal person is going to tell you what you need to hear not what you want to hear. B -b -b Boss Cowboy Sports. W -w where your voice matters. Sports.